going on everyone in yesterday's video i posted a recording of the legion which had some questionable stuttering which involved in my testing obs settings so checking around from the previous video you could see that i had multiple tests trying out different settings with frame generation and dlss <clears throat> in those recordings you could see a stuttering effect and stuff of that nature um, especially when playing spider-man dipping down to like 30 fps per setting um, which you kind of showcase here which i'm showing on screen from the video and i believe this is due to one recording methodology having two obs settings running at the same time in which later i switched to almost like a pseudo 4k mode recording with two 1080p tracks and then the next change I did was leaving AV1 and going to HEVC and then adjusting some of my settings. So I wanted to go into some of that testing methodology, recording differences, and showcasing uh, some of the troubleshooting and issues if, um, if that's helpful for people. Because I think some people do like using these um, the, these devices for recording or streaming on OBS. So let's take a look at, first off, my OBS settings. So as I mentioned in previous videos, instead of having two OBS instances, I instead have a method where I have two 1080p screens. Um, you can showcase that here by seeing um, the video is just 1080p times two. Um, and in the recording settings, again, I go to HEVC and I'm using a controlled uh, variable rate of 16 and keyframe interval two. So I do retest the other settings um, in Spider-Man and all the games I tested yesterday. And I will say that perhaps one tweak, at least if you're using Legion Vantage, is having these settings. I'm um, not on performance mode or anything like that, but I will say that when I went to hybrid mode and I turned it on and restarted, it had the integrated you know, Optimus, but it was kind of bugging out with my external monitor and even the internal monitor. I couldn't control my brightness. So I think that's a bug. Um, so I just left it on dedicated GPU mode. So. Let's just take a look at some of the gameplay now and some of the fixes starting with spider-man so one thing i want to point out before as i'm doing a resolve audio over this and watching the playback and it seems that in the playback it's stuttering but when i was playing this video game you can see it was at 110 fps um, so i don't know if that's also an obs recording issue but hopefully this exports out fine Overall, I had the gameplay set to max with frame generation on, DSLS set to ultra performance, and everything was bumped up to the max. And compared to yesterday's video, if you double check that, or I could just tell you what it was, it was about 80 frames in this uh, section and bumped up to 180. So that's a good fix there. I took my own advice to show you guys a stopwatch running in the background. So if this is exporting, you could see, in the, at least from the A6000 view, if it's encoding issues or not. Anyways, here, running frame generation with ultra performance. Yesterday was getting around, sometimes even the 30 FPS, um, usually at 60, with settings turned down. So back to ray tracing ultra and then changing the settings. Um, we're taking a look, at least from the moment I'm watching on Resolve, unable to at least resolve in these settings are unable to consistently give 60 fps and of course this is some multi-cam footage so that could be impacting um so something to keep in mind for people who are recording making content and also leveraging this device so i will say that when testing you know obviously i'm making this video and recording the output of the obs runs fine in vlc and i think i've narrowed down to the reasons why i'm getting stuttering in making this audio voiceover and recording in davinci resolve is because simply this is being exported as a 4k video but recorded as two 1080p's put on top of each other so you have that multi-cam and then not only that um, if you look at you know this this playback uh you know time head thing this is just something you should consider um it does run perfectly fine as a 1080p video probably even a 4k video but what's happening here is that in the timeline i actually set it to run and super sample twice so this clip attribute is right here super scaled twice to fit the 4k it's actually in hindsight that's pretty good for having a machine that's doing a multi-cam and super scaling two things at the same time and then putting it back so there. One final thing I want to bring up in terms of performance is that with this particular device, it actually performs better than my desktop 3060 Ti, but of course it does have frame generation 
And one thing I am noticing, at least from some of these video cuts, and you can see for yourself, is some of the ray tracing reflections, at least to me, look kind of off or weird. Now, this is using the technology preview version of it, so that could be attributed to that. But um, let's just showcase, and you can take for a look for yourself what you think of Cyberpunk running on this machine, with of course the new tweaked and fixed better OBS recording settings. The next game I tested with the new settings was Horizon, which I showcased yesterday. I will say that it did seem to have a better improvement in terms of uh, less drop frames, stuff of that nature. Though yesterday I was getting good performance and I had already switched to the HEVC encoding profile. Um, so overall, I think you'll be fine um, if you're a content recorder, content streamer, Twitch gaming, if for some reason you need to be on the run and play video games and streaming. Uh, I mean, I'm, like for my use case, I'm pretty much 100% travel all the time right now. So this machine, I'm going to test it out. I'm going to Denver. I'm going to miss the NBA Finals Parade, but I am going to do a road trip. We'll see how this does in terms of um, you know, overall weight. It's going to be a road trip, so I'm not going to be backpacking too much, so it should be fine. For people looking for a powerhouse on the go, if you're a consultant like myself or something like that, this could be the machine for you. Side note, for people making content, the fans will turn really loud, so if you use quiet mode, this could help with making post-audio production. Now, in terms of let's getting into what I noticed from GTA 5, I did notice some stuttering and actual overall game freezing. Just take a look at that stopwatch in the background and see maybe encoding issues happening in the background. I also attribute it to possibly having OneDrive issues syncing my documents, which is where the game files are saved. So something to consider, at least for this particular game for some reason, um, this was the only one after these adjusted settings where I had to turn my OBS settings down a little bit in order to get uh, in my opinion, acceptable performance. So after getting a lot of these settings fixed, um, or at least tweaked, I will say that I found the gameplay to be fairly acceptable at 80 frames per second, just about, um, and it was pretty smooth gameplay, definitely um, ultra, ultra settings. I will take a note here to say that, at least from my perspective, if you're recording 1080p, you might be able to get away with those HEVC OBS settings I said, um, but if you might be possibly recording content in 4K, you might need to bump those settings down, because as you saw earlier, there was a encoder overload, which I think might also attribute to the gameplay starting in GTA 5. So overall, at the end of the day, you want to monitor your OBS. Hopefully you have a second monitor. Make sure that if you're getting stuttering in the game, that's not due to the encoder overloading. So overall, my impressions of Red Dead were pretty good. Um, turned up all the settings. Uh, so from my 3060 Ti laptop, I believe, 
this is what the settings transferred over and they were pretty much kind of medium settings so now i was able to bump this up confirm the resolution 2560 by 1600 and then bump up all the graphics um, so that is what this gameplay footage is going to be with the low latency enabled uh you know trying to bump up every setting to the highest that it could be You know, while we were stuck up that mountain, I thought long and hard about if we'd have to eat you. Very amusing. I suggested we roasted you alive, but Mr. Pearson was keener on chopping you up and turning you into stew. Said he couldn't bear to see your face for even one moment longer than he had to. You're quite the amusing companion, aren't you? Hey, Arthur! What you want? <laughs> One sour son of a bitch, ain't you? Only when I see you. <laughs> Only when I see you. Don't I know it? So I'd just like to wrap up by stating that, um, you know, for OBS, I just recommend recording an HEVC instead of AV1, and then also to make sure you keep a lookout for the encoder that will impact your gameplay and overall freeze your system up. So make sure that if you do have to tweak your settings, such as lowering the control rate or stuff of that nature, to keep a lookout for that. Finally, the final tweaks I'd recommend are the Lenovo Vantage settings. Make sure that in hybrid mode it's not turned on and you're running with TGPU because I just got in general a lot of Windows bugs as well if you're not gaming and using this for other purposes. And then lastly, if you need to, performance mode will really make the fans loud, which will hurt in terms of if you're you know, making streams or whatnot. It's going to pick up, like, I actually have the fans being picked up right now. Uh, but hopefully my noise isolation and post-production can get rid of it. Uh, but that's something to consider as well. But performance mode should help with throttling and theoretically boost some performance. So hope you guys enjoyed these recommendations really geared towards OBS and content creation to get better gameplay. See you guys in the next video. Peace.